Make sure you try this question on your own first before listening on. In part A, we are asked to find the equivalent capacitance of the system. Now, to find the equivalent capacitance, what this means is we have to take this complex circuit that contains four capacitors and successively simplify it until we have just a single capacitor. And to do that, we first take note that these two capacitors right here are arranged in series because they are basically adjacent to each other. There's no junction between them. There's just a single wire that connects them without any branching between them. Similarly, these two capacitors will also be in series. When two capacitors are in series, we can combine them and find their equivalent capacitance by following this equation right here for series capacitors. So for example, for the first set of series capacitors, the one that's on the top here, we could say that 1 divided by their equivalent capacitance is equal to 1 over 3 microfarads plus 1 over 6 microfarads. It is okay to leave these in microfarads. Now we're going to want to add the two quantities on the right hand side. Probably could just use your calculator for this if you wish to. So we have 1 over the equivalent capacitance is equal to 1 half, or we could say 1 over 2 microfarads. And then there's a nice little trick to solve for the equivalent capacitance. We're going to take these two and we're going to flip them around and then on the other side do the same thing. You could also cross multiply to solve for this, but I like this trick. You just flip this around, it becomes CEQ over 1, which is of course just CEQ, and then you end up with 2 microfarads. So this would be the equivalent capacitance of the capacitors that we marked on the top of the figure. Now, similarly, we're going to find the equivalent capacitance for the ones that are marked on the bottom here. Same equation, we can say 1 over CEQ equals 1 over 2 microfarads plus 1 over 4 microfarads. On our calculators, we can add the quantities on the right-hand side, and when we do so, we're going to get 3 fourths. And then do this trick again where you flip both sides. So this will get flipped around to make CEQ, and then this will get flipped around to make 4 thirds. If you wish, 4 thirds can be written as 1.33 microfarads. So with these two results, we go back to our original circuit, and again, we're going to combine these two into a single capacitor, and then these two will also be combined into a single capacitor. So our circuit will look something like this. Now, next, we need to take these two capacitors and combine them. Now, these are not in series, and we know that because if we follow a path from the top capacitor to the bottom one, we would encounter what is called a junction. So that's basically a branch point in the circuit. So between those two capacitors, if you encounter a junction or branch point, then you know they are indeed in parallel. To combine parallel capacitors, it's a little bit easier. For parallel, we can simply add the individual capacitances to get the equivalent capacitance. So for this case, we can say that the equivalent capacitance is simply the sum of these two individual capacitances. So we basically just add them together, and when we do that, we get 3.33 microfarads. So now our goal has been accomplished. We have a circuit consisting of a single equivalent capacitor whose capacitance is 3.33 microfarads. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now, for part B, we are asked to find the charge on each capacitor. And then to find that, we're going to actually work our way backwards to the original circuit. When we work backwards, we need to follow these two rules. When moving your way backwards from the simplified circuit, which is this one, to the original circuit, you have to follow these two guidelines. When you bring Excuse me, when you are moving backwards to series, you're going to bring your charge with you. 
charge is symbolized by Q. We'll see what we mean by that in a moment. And when you're moving backwards to a parallel arrangement, you're going to bring the voltage with you, which is symbolized by delta V. Let's start with the second rule, actually, because we're going to be initially moving backwards to a parallel arrangement. And when we do that, we're going to bring the voltage with us. Now, here's our simplified circuit down here. We're going to be moving our way backwards, so that means we're going to be going backwards to this circuit right here. And notice that we already said that that was in parallel. So that means, according to the rule, that these 90 volts that we have in our simplified circuit, we're going to carry them back to us, or with us, to this circuit right here. So that simply means that the voltage on this capacitor is 90 volts, and the voltage on, excuse me, on, the, on this capacitor is also 90 volts. We have the capacitance is already marked, so we can say this is C, maybe C1, this is C2. So far, so good. Now, before we continue to work our way backwards to the original circuit, we actually need to calculate the charge on this capacitor and on this capacitor. Now, that's easy to do because charge can be obtained using this equation right here. Let's copy it down. We have capacitance equals charge over the volts. So for example, for this capacitor right here, we can see that the capacitance is two microfarads. And this is going to equal the charge that we seek to calculate divided by 90 volts. If you cross multiply here, you would get that the charge is equal to 180. And then this would come out in microcoulombs since we used microfarads here. So we're going to mark on this capacitor that its charge is 180 microcoulombs. And then similarly, we're going to calculate the charge on this capacitor using the same equation. So we would have 1.33 microfarads equals the charge divided by the 90 volts. When you cross multiply here, you're going to get 120. And this would be microcoulombs. So notice that you've calculated three quantities for each capacitor. You have the charge, the capacitance, and the volts. And then same thing with this capacitor. You have the charge, the capacitance, and the volts. So we have all three quantities. We're going to move backwards to the original circuit. So now we're going this way. Notice when you go from this capacitor backwards, you sort of decompose it into those two capacitors. Those are in series. If we follow our first rule when moving backwards to series, you have to bring the charge with you. So that simply means that the 180 microcoulombs that we calculated for this capacitor will move backwards and be placed on both this capacitor as well as this capacitor. And then when we move backwards from this capacitor to these two, Again, we're moving back to series, so we're going to bring the charge with us. So 120 microcoulombs on this capacitor and 120 microcoulombs on that capacitor. Remember, part B wanted the charge on each capacitor. So we've got it. We've got for this capacitor right here, it's 180 microcoulombs. For this capacitor here, also 180 microcoulombs. And then for the two on the bottom, they are each 120 microcoulombs. So part B is actually solved. And finally, on to part C, which wants the, well, they call it the potential difference. That's the same thing as delta V, the volts. So it's getting a little crowded here, but maybe we'll come down here. To get the volts on each capacitor, we simply go back to this equation. And we may find it helpful, actually, to solve this for delta V before calculating it. So let's multiply both sides by delta V. So then these would cancel out on the right-hand side. And then, to solve for delta V, we can divide both sides of the equation by the capacitance. So there we have delta V is equal to Q over C. So for the first capacitor, the one that's marked in 3 microfarads, you would take the charge, divide it by its capacitance, and you would end up with 60 volts. So that would be the volts for this first capacitor. We'll mark it here. Same basic idea for the others. You're just dividing the charge by the capacitance. So for the next one, this one right in here, you'd have 180 divided by 6, and that would give you 30 volts. 
for the capacitor down here, the two microfarad one, you would divide the charge of 120 by the capacitance of two, and you would get 60 volts. And finally, divide the charge by the capacitance, 120 divided by four is 30 volts. So these four quantities are the answers to part C.